<laughs> All right, guys. So I'm going to go through number um, 18 through 23. So this is your second page. All righty then. Um, so I'm going to start really quickly with just uh, simple solving. Um, so for this example, you have 4x plus 5 equals 25. Remember, you can't automatically just divide by 4 unless you want to divide everything by 4, which I think is kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to first subtract by 5, both sides by 5, to get rid of that 5. And so I end up with 4x um, equals 20. Now, I want to solve for x, so I'm going to isolate it by dividing by 4, and I get my answer to be x equals 5. Okay? Remember, if you have a 4 here, then you're going to divide. If I had, for example, x over 4 equals 20, then in order to isolate the x, I would multiply everything by 4, and I would get 80 for my answer. So those are just two different ways I could ask the same question. All right, 25%, number 19, 25% of the people in my book club don't read the book. If five people don't read the book, so this is really important where you think about the wording. Remember, 25% automatically move the decimal place over two places, so it should be 0.25. Remember, the word of means multiply, so 25% of the people in my book club. Now, do I know how many people total are in my book club? And the answer should be no, so you can put whatever... Um, variable you want. I'm going to put P for people. So 25% of all the people in my book club don't read the book. Now that number is 5. So that's my whole setup. That's the hardest part of this problem. Now all I have to do is isolate P. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0.25 and the answer you should get is 20. And specifically you can't just write 20 and box it off and be happy. You have to write 20 people because you've got to include units. Okay, the other way I could ask this question, I could say 25% of the people in my book club don't read the book. If there are 20 people in my book club, how many people don't read the book? So if I got rid of this part, right, and said there are 20 people in my book club, right, then this would be a different question because I would say 0.25, 25% of the people in my book club. Well, now I've told you how many people in my, are in my book club. There are 20 people. And now, what I'm asking is how many people don't read the book? Well, now all you have to do is say 0.25 times 20, and that will give you the number of people who don't read the book, which in this case would be 5. Okay, so those are the only two different ways that this problem can be varied. All right. Number 20, perform the indicate, indicated operations and give an answer. So here's my recommendation. Since this is in parentheses, you have to do this multiplication first. So when you do that... Okay, and I would recommend grabbing out your calculator and just keeping it on your calculator. So I'm going to do it right now. I do 5.67 times 10.35. I get 58.6845, which I'm not going to write out completely because I think that's kind of a long number to write out. And with multiplication and division, guys, remember, it can get even longer. So just keep it in your calculator because you cannot round it all. Just leave it in your calculator. However, I'm going to write a number up top because I need to follow the sig fig rules. And the reason why I write the number up top is for when I'm dealing with the final subtraction and finding out what my answer should be, that helps with my rounding. So, since I'm multiplying, I need to use the fewest number of sig figs. So this is 1, 2, 3. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. So my final answer should have 3. Okay? So this should be um, 58.7. Up top. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take the answer in my calculator, not the 58.7, and I'm going to subtract by 5.1. And the answer I get is 53.5845. Now, what this tells me is that the fewest number of decimal places is one, which my final answer should have, since I am now subtracting. Okay. Up here, I did this because I was multiplying and got this. Now I'm subtracting, so I get 53 point, and I round it to 6. Now, here's the important thing. Right now, honestly, the fact that I wrote this up here doesn't matter. But what if, for example, this were just two sig figs, and I had to round this to 59, okay, for example. Okay, so if this were 59, this final answer 
couldn't have one decimal place, it would have to have one, which if you didn't keep track of sig figs, you wouldn't know that. And the answer would be 54 and not 53.6. So that's why it's important to keep track of sig figs, even though in your calculations, you're not using the rounded number. Okay, this is just for the final answer. All right, based on this ruler, what digit can you estimate? Okay, so I know each single one's place, because I know one, two, three, four, five. So, for example, three is for sure. That is a certain digit. So the digit that I'm estimating, remember you can only des estimate, sorry, one digit. The um, digit I'm estimating, I'm going to say like 0.2. This is the digit I'm estimating, and that's the tenths place. So always keep in mind, I can only estimate one digit, and in this case, it's the tenths place that I'm estimating. Okay, um, I've got a density and volume question, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the fo my four steps. Okay, so my given. All right, I know my density. My density equals 3.17 grams over cubic centimeters. And guys, a cubic centimeter is the same thing as a milliliter. Okay. I also know my mass, which is 500, oops, sorry, 599 grams. The other thing I know, which I always ask you guys to write for your given, is the formula. So for density, remember broken heart, it's mass over volume. And I'm asking you to find your volume. So now that's very, that should be really clear to you. Step two, I want to show the steps I'm going to take. So I'm going to go from my density and my mass, and I'm going to find my volume. All right, so step three, I'm going to manipulate my density formula. So density equals mass over volume. Now, to find volume, what I need to do is get it all by itself. So first, I'm going to cross multiply. Remember, there's an implied one here. Okay, so this is cross multiplication. So all I have to do, mass times one, density times volume. Okay, so it's mass, because mass times one is mass. Mass equals density times volume. Okay, now, I want volume all by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by the density, and I get my final equation. So my volume equals my mass over my density. Okay, now I can finally solve because I have all my numbers. So 599 grams, and I put in my units just to help me down the line. Down the line, 599 over 3.17 grams over cubic centimeters. If you notice, if you have um, these grams, by the way, cancel. And if you have one over cubic centimeters, but this is in the denominator, this will actually end up being in your numerator for your units. So the centimeters cubed are going to be your final units. Okay. So when I get this, my answer, I get 188.96 centimeters cubed. Now, I have to deal with sig figs. This says, since I'm dividing, this has one, two, three sig figs. This has one, two, three sig figs. So it's 189 centimeters cubed. Okay, that's my final answer. Okay, we got one more problem. I want you to convert from 4.5 teragrams to grams. Oh, sorry, by the way, the last step was to check for sig figs, and I did that. All right, convert from 4.5 teragrams to grams. So step one, I'm going to write my given which is 4.5 teragrams. Now, I know the relationship between teragrams and grams, but I'm going to write it out. So teragrams equals grams. Okay. Remember to look and see and think about which unit's bigger, teragrams or grams. And if you look at your chart, teragrams is higher, so it's bigger. So one, you put a 1 in front of teragrams. There are 10 to the 12th grams in a teragram. And now I want to find grams. So I'm going to go straight from teragrams to grams, because the only unit, guys, that has a prefix here is teragrams. So it's only going to be one step. If I had two units with prefixes, it would be two steps, but it's only one here. 
Now I'm going to do, actually do the work. So 4.5 teragrams. I'm going to crisscross swoosh. Teragrams, I want to get rid of them, so I'm going to put these on the bottom so that they will then cancel. Okay, and I'm going to put grams up top. Now I have this relationship. It's 10 to the 12th and 1. So what I end up getting is 4.5 times 10 to the 12th grams. Okay, check for sig figs. This has 2, this has 2, and I'm done. So 4, I finished. Okay, the last page, guys, is going to be on the next video.